Hello everybody. This is Sharon A.K. Harris with another project. I'm going to be using Wendy Becky's chippies and these are really so much fun to use and they make your cards look so beautiful. Uh, she has flowers and wreaths and so we're going to just have some fun today and this is going to be easy but I'm also going to bring you to an advanced level where we can take it a step further if you're so inclined to try and get a little bit more depth in your paint in your eye so i'm going to um take one of these little flowers and i'm going to show you how i paint it and then we're going to go and uh put, embellish and put things together of course i just stuck my finger in it but that's like my life story okay so first of all i'm going to be using uh, all of the items will be li listed but i'll be probably using some of the uh outrageous in pearl liquid pearls and I'm going to be using a lot of alcohol inks today. I'm going to be using Sunshine Yellow, Watermelon, Meadow, and um, Limeade. I love that color. And we'll also be using some Stickles because we're going to be doing a sparkling art today. So I'm going to be using Stickles Holly. We're going to be using Stickles Yellow. Okay, and then we're gonna be using Stickles Orange Slice. Now, I put in ink cozies on these because I'm getting low on some of this, so I put it on the side and it keeps the fluids towards the front. So these are really handy, plus it keeps your bottles from tipping over. So that's another one of uh, Ranger's wonderful products. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna show you how I decorate the chippies first, and then we're gonna go into doing some pretty fun things. So um, I'm going to get a wreath one first. What I want to do is take some alcohol ink and I'm going to use the limeade because I want it to be light. And so I just take a little of, the, of that and put it on my craft sheet. And I get my little bit of alcohol, 91%. And I'll tell you the items I'm using as I'm using them. So I want some areas dark, some areas lighter. So I just kind of pounce it and I don't try to cover the whole thing. I want it to be different all the time. Uh, if you want it all the same, that's fine. You are allowed, I give you permission to do anything you want, but this is what I'm gonna do today. And I like variations. It looks a little more, you know, interesting. It looks a little more interesting when you variegate the color. So I like to leave those little spots. Now, I know that one end is going to be darker because it'll be where, you know, the flowers go or whatever. But so I'll, I'll put a little extra there. But I can always adjust. So the, I'm just giving it a tint. Okay, and I can take that dirty brush with just alcohol and tint some more. So it'll be a different value of green. And I let that be. And now I'm going to take a little bit of meadow, which is a little darker. Another one of my favorite colors. And I just starting at the bottom. So now I know this is the bottom because that's already top, you know, lit. So I'm just gonna tap on that. But leave all those little spots, wipe out my brush, and then just tap on the sides a little bit. I don't wanna bring it all the way up the top. I want that lighter. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of my sunshine yellow, put that down. Wipe out my brush a little bit. Tap that in and tap in the lighter area with the yellow. So now I got a nice light area and warmth towards the top, like as if the sun is hitting it and it gives it another look. And you can go over the lower area as well. It will add a little bit of color to change to the bottom. So that looks really nice. So it's as easy as that, but we're not done because we're doing sparkling art today. So what I'm gonna do is get some stickles, some of the yellow stickles. And I'm going to put that down. And again, I don't want this totally covered with stickles. I'm going to do that probably with my flowers, but with the wreath, I just want it to be just pounce. A little more at the bottom because it'll be covered a lot, so I don't know where. So I'm just kind of a little more at the bottom and just little bits here and there because it makes it a little more interesting to me. Okay, and then you just put it aside to dry. So we'll just put that over there. I'm gonna wipe my area up. So now I got some flowers I painted the same way. I just took yellow in this one, just yellow, nothing else, sunshine yellow. And now all I do is go over it with a little bit of 
that same yellow stickles. And it's as easy as that. I mean, you can do these really quick with your kids, your grandkids, and your, you know, not for nothing. Get your girlfriends over and let's play. Let's face it, isn't that a fun time? My girlfriends just love it when we do this stuff. So I'm just painting them up. Now this one I already did. Now let's say I wanted even more glittery. I just keep adding another layer, but you don't have to. The one layer is fine, but I like to do thin layers that rather than one thick layer. It takes too long to dry. This will dry faster. So um, I'm just gonna put a little quick one on here. That's good. I also am using the um, orange slice on the the redder ones. So I'm going to show you how I um, I want to paint one of these flowers for you. So um, I'm going to wipe out my brush and I'm going to get some of the uh, watermelon. Put a little dab of that down. Bring it, the little flower over and start in the middle because it's darker in the middle and then work out. And if it's all dark, it doesn't matter because we're going to be doing other things. So no worries. There's never any worries in art, really, other than you're, you're always afraid because you're doing such a good job and you're afraid of messing it up. Well, that's because you're making magic. You can even blot it a little bit if you want. All right, so I might like the center a little darker, so I'll even add more of the uh, watermelon color to that. All right, that's good. Now I have to use alcohol, wipe my brush out. Okay, so that looks good, and it's already dry. Even though this is a, it's a little porous, but not that bad and it doesn't matter for what we're doing. I like the uh, alcohol ink. It's uh, nice and vibrant and stuff. Now once you paint your little elements up and they're dry, because we use stickles, oops, <laughs> because we use stickles, we can go on top of this and paint again. So I'm going to take a little of that watermelon color and just paint on top to give a little more depth to my little bow. Just putting it where I know the bow's behind the big pot. And you, you don't have to do this. It's pretty the way it is, but you can get a little more detail. And I'll go around that button in the middle where the knot is and just kind of pull out. So because this is alcohol ink and we're going over the stickles, the stickles makes a slick surface. So I can lift. Let's say I didn't like anything and I wanted to change my mind. You can do it because you you uh, applied a stickles first. Okay, so I'm just add adding a little more alcohol ink. You see how pretty that is? And I'm just adding some more. And it really looks pretty. And I'm starting at the dark area, kind of going around the design that she has there. You can also do that on the edge here. So I want to do, uh, uh, let's say you make a mistake or something, you don't like it. I'm going to do it just so you can see what to do. So let's say I didn't want all that. I decided, oh, no, I don't want it all. So just wipe out your brush in alcohol. And damp with a damp alcohol brush, you can just put some alcohol on it and blot. You see how it comes off? because it's got the stickles underneath and it makes a slick surface so it doesn't it isn't porous and you can lift off. So don't I'll, don't ever be afraid to try things. That's where the magic happens. And I kind of would like a little of that color over here. And you see how pretty? So you can actually lift and you don't have to worry about anything. I hope you can see the glitter. It's hard for me with the lighting especially messing around with glitter. So, okay, so that's how you do a little variegation to it. You can antique. Let's do a little antiquing on the bow just to show you. A little more of the watermelon. And right around that edge, I'm just going to hit it with some of that watermelon color right around the edge. You see how you can antique it? Looks really pretty. Gives it a little more depth. So you see the difference? That's really nice. I like it. Well, let's say you wanted a little more uh, pizzazz to it again, because I'm a pizzazzle-dazzle girl. You could take a little of that pearls, the orange, the um, outrageous, and you could even put a little of the pearls in the middle. Look how pretty that is. You can even pull a few on top, you know, just put a few dots down, little drag, little lines, and it looks like the little bow 
If you got too much of a dot, just pull it. That's all. Drag it with the tip. Look how nice that is. So you have all these options. I also do that to the flowers. I'm going to put that aside. I like adding a little bit to the flower center. So I'm just going to use this one color. But of course, you can use any of the colors. But the liquid pearls are beautiful on these. They really pop. And some of these are going to end up layering. So I don't know. It doesn't matter. I can change my mind. So I just want to do a few to, sh I just want to do a few to show you how it works. See how I can follow the center line. This one, I didn't even do anything. Let's just do it plain. I think that looks really pretty. So you could actually do the flowers in um, in, in the uh, liquid pearls. I really like that look. Too. And just put some centers in. And another center. Okay, so that that's, gets me going anyway. So let's get a card. I'm going to use the glitter cardstock from Ranger. I'm going to put this aside to dry. Won't take long. And uh, keep your finger out of it. Depending on where you live is how long it takes to dry. It, uh, it's just the way it is. So I'm going to use the uh, Make It Perfect Card Adhesive from Wendy Becky's collection. I'm going to get that wreath that we made. And I'm going to put that right here. And, uh, and now I'm going to decide how I want to lay things out. So I, I really like the wreath. And I like the little bow. And let's wipe that clean. Then I'm going to put a, a little bit of a little flower here. And maybe I'll layer that flower with another little flower. Look how gorgeous that is. And then a tiny flower underneath would look really cute. So let me get one of my little small flowers and put it underneath. And there you go. you got a beautiful beautiful card and all I have to do is glue it down so I'm going to use so I this is how I decide what I want to do I also want to let you know you can put something in the middle like let's say um, you wanted to give this as a card you could put somebody's picture in the middle so you could do that and uh, or just as it is it's very beautiful and you can put little sentiments around and put a sentiment in the middle like um, a, you know happy housewarming or such things you know the designers have wonderful um sentiments and uh, the letterate line is also very very good so I'm just going to put I'm just going to put a little adhesive on my wreath and it's as easy as that okay so that's because this is the bottom I'm going to make sure that the light area is on the top push it down Slide it over, kind of center it. So you can put your sentiment in the middle. Okay, so now I want to apply the bow. Adding a little glue to that. And a little glue on here, just to make sure I got a good adhesive. And the Wendy Vecchi's glue is, is just fabulous. Uh, I've tried others and it doesn't work as good. So I'll just press it down. I glued the uh, the little one to the top. Now I'm going to glue the bottom. And put that in here. Like that. And one more for the little one at the bottom. Very cute. Look how cute that is. And like I said, I would put a sentiment in here or a picture of uh, a family member or a birthday person or even a housewarming. Put a picture of their little house in there. How cute would that be? So we're going to put this one aside and move to our next project. Okay, I did another project and I already painted it, but I wanted to show you what I did. Is I painted the background of the paper with alcohol ink and I'm going to show you how I do that. So... Let's get one of these out because of the uh, time of gluing and, and drying, you know, for the inks and the glitter. I figured I better just do it in advance, but it's really easy. All I did was take some green and just kind of had fun. So if you like to have fun doing art, this is the deal to do. And then take a little yellow wherever you like. And then all I did was take my alcohol, my 91% alcohol. Let's move this. Just take some alcohol and move it around. 
it, because it's alcohol ink, it reactivates. So don't worry if it dries real quick. It doesn't matter because you can come back and move it. And I'm just taking my brush just with alcohol, just from what we left. And look at the beautiful designs. It almost has a feeling of leaves, doesn't it? I think so. So you don't have to like sit there and put a leaf in. You just let the ink do the work. It, that's one thing about alcohol ink. I love to paint with it because it really does all the work for you. And you can add more. You can do anything you want. So I'm going to add a few more drops. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that. Now I can play around because I got a little something there. Tap it around. It's going to lighten up as it dries. And some of the areas will darken around the like little blossoms, like with watercolors almost. I'm just putting a little in the corners. And just letting it dry. So now this will dry. And that's all I did when I did this one. Over here. So that's all there is to it. If you don't like something, let's say you don't like blossoms. I do like blossoms, these little crusty edges. All you have to do is take a little alcohol and you can wiggle into it. See how easy it is to change anything. So there's nothing to worry about. Now on this one, I did something a little different. I did a hot. So Wendy has a collection of uh, frames and they come in a package with all these beautiful frames and such with backboards in them. So you get the frame and you get the backboard and you can put it inside. So you can use all these elements and I'm gonna show you how to do one. But the, the, this is amazing, I love these. So <clears throat> on this one, I decided not to use the hot together with the element. I'm gonna use it just as a hot and I'm gonna put that aside. We'll use that for another project. And what I did on this one was just take the green of the, um, I used uh, the, um, the limeade, get my ink. I want it pretty juicy and I'll juice up the ink. Do you see how I'm doing that? I'm putting it on the side and I'm, so you're not gonna get as dark a color. And I start at the edge where it's darker and bring it into the middle where it's lighter. And just dip into your alcohol to thin it out. Now I come back and I put a little dark on the edge and bring it in. Okay, and that's all I do. Then what I'm gonna do is to take my stickles again, and this is the um, holly. I'm gonna put the holly, well actually I'll put it on the side. I'm getting low on that too. So like I say, when you get low, it's hard to get the thing to move. So, but if you use the stick, the uh, ink cozies, there's a cut on it and that keeps it from rolling and it keeps it on its side so you can work it easy. Anyway, I'm just gonna take the stickles now and just go on top, because alcohol ink dries in just seconds. And I want it thin. Remember I say I like to work thin to thick. And in doing this, what happens is it makes that barrier, it makes it more slick surface. And uh, alcohol ink does not, um, it moves on a slick surface. So you want it to move. So we're just gonna Put that in there, get it nice and glittery and beautiful. And when you work on top of the glitter, the stickles, uh, it does not affect the, the uh, alcohol ink that goes on top does not affect it. It just goes on top and it still glitters like, like diamonds. So anyway, I got that and then I did this. So this is what it comes out as this is drying. And all I did was antique it by going into my more of the um, Limeade, and I'm also using Meadow, and I went around the edge just to antique it a little bit and to give it a more more depth. Now, let's say if I didn't like it, again, I can just put alcohol on it and lift it off, you see, because of the stickles. So now you've got all that option, and you've got the option to try things without the fear of, oh my God, did I wreck it? No, you didn't. You just made it more beautiful. No difference. And and if you decide you don't want something, you can change it. So there you go. That's how that works. So on this one, I was going to put this in here. And have a beautiful little hot. 
And then I wanted to take one of Wendy's. She has these beautiful, in her wreath collection, all these beautiful little wreaths that I did the same thing, painted it. In, uh, and now I just want to see how I want my design to be. And there's so many ways of doing it. I kind of like it a little off center sometimes. Maybe kind of because your things go over things, it's very desirable. And I would like a little, a little flower there. And I would like a little flower maybe right there. That looks a little clunky. Let me look, see what happens if I put another flower here. Oh, I like that. So this one could use a little more color, but it's got a lot of glitter. But I could, I would like more color. So what I'm going to do is wash out my brush and put on some more uh, yellow. And I'm going to use that alcohol ink, sunshine yellow. And I'm going to put a dot right in the middle and just let it run. And I'll wiggle it around and now I'll get even more color. You see the difference? Look how nice and colorful that is. And let's see how that looks. Oh, I like that. That looks nice. It needs a center, but we can do that even after. So I, I kind of like that. I like this over here. So I like it to, um, what I'm thinking when I'm doing this is, how can I make this flow? And I've got other elements here I can use. So now these are all dry, so I can use these as well. So I'm going to play around. I really like this one. The colors go well with all of it. But this one stands out a little bit too peachy for this color. And so I'm gonna make this come over a little bit more. And so we're thinking about design. And uh, this is what's gonna make you do your cards even more uh, professional looking, because you're like thinking about a flow. You know, we, we got this kind of flowing down. And then you could put a sentiment here to whatever you wanna say. And we'll put that there. And it needs one more over here. So let me see. Oh, we got this one. Yeah, that's kind of peachy. Okay, so that looks pretty nice. I actually like it just like that. Sometimes less is more, so I don't want to really overdo. Uh, I could put another one on here, but I'm thinking that's just way too much. Yeah, I'm liking it just like that. So I'm going to just glue this down. So let's take that apart. Get some of our Make It Art adhesive. And put that down right there. And just kind of wiggle it in. There you go. And then I'm going to take this piece and put some adhesive on there. And I like to get it good. And I like it to stick out on both sides because this way it's a um, it's more uh, interesting to me. But you do what you want. That's what makes us all different eyes. And I'm just going to put that flower right there. And now I can adjust things. Maybe I'll move this over a little bit more so it kind of points downward a little bit, but still coming off. And now I need to put this one down. And then I'm going to put this aside and let it dry. Look how adorable that is. I really love it. So I'm going to put this one aside and let it dry. Like I said, I put a sentiment here. You can even move this over a little bit more. That's what's good about the glue. It doesn't adhere that fast that you can't adjust things. So that's really great. But I'm going to put it aside and let it dry. Okay, now we're going to do a, a little more in-depth project. So what I'm going to do this time is we're going to do a little painting. So what I want, want what we're going to do is take our little frame of the hot that we had from the interior one that we used like that. And I'm not going to use the interior. I'm just going to use the frame. And what I want to do is um, cover this. I want to put a, a, a light glaze down and I want to use the sunshine yellow. And I'm going to use some green. So We'll put some sunshine yellow first because that's my lighter color. And then I work to the dock. And we're just going on top with the alcohol ink. And like at this point, you see how it absorbs? That's what alcohol ink will do if things are porous. 
There is a little coating on these uh, frames, but um, it's still pretty porous. But when I put on the glitter, it makes it uh, slick and not porous. It really seals it well. So I'm gonna use some of the green glitter on this. Let's use a little of that holly because I need it to be a little more porous. I mean, a little more slick. And I'm just kind of quickly putting that on thin so it doesn't take forever to dry. I'm always doing it differently. So, um, you know, try things. Don't be afraid, really. Really, don't be afraid. And if you do ever have problems, you can always uh, text me. I can always help you. That's what we do for each other. Make, our, make each other get uh, good information so we can create wonderful art. So that looks really pretty. That's going to set aside and dry. Okay, now I'm going to take out a piece of... This is this is uh, transparent, translucent UPO paper by Ranger and Tim Holtz. So what I want to do is make a hot shape, and then I'm going to use that as an interior on the... Uh, on my hat, so I'm going to use it as a frame. So what I'm going to do is actually paint this painting, and this is what I'm going to show you how to do. Take the interior of the hat and trace it around with my literate pen because I want a nice thin line. So I'm going to put a little of the teak wood on the side. I think I'm going to use it on the frame as well after it dries. So I'm going to put a little teak wood here, and this will be the centers of my flowers. See how those flowers are? And I'm going to put some yellow out because we're going to have some yellow on the... I should put that there. So we're going to use teak wood and yellow at first. So first I like to use, of course, the light color first. And I'm going to wipe out my brush. And I'm just going to... Don't worry about it. All you want to do is make a round circle. You can do that, right? If yellow. And then just scribble it on the edge. It doesn't matter if it's perfect or anything. And maybe we'll do one sideways, which would be just draw a line and scribble back and forth. See, already you can see the flower. You can make it bigger, make it smaller, whatever you want. But basically you just wanna scribble from the center out so that we get a center. And it can come even over the line, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it at all. Okay, now we are, I'm gonna decide where my center is and I'm just gonna put a little circle let it let the ink move and then a little line here automatically will look like a little flower center and that's all there is to it so you don't have to get really technical if you don't want to we just do that i'm going to wipe out my brush and just tap and tap a little bit on it just to kind of move it a little bit now my ink is drying because it's drying, it gets a little thicker. So you see how I twirl in it around? It's just getting darker. So I can use it because the ink is getting thicker. I can make a little darker around the edge. And that's all I'm doing. Just the edge. Don't worry about nothing. Already it looks like flowers, right? We didn't even do anything, really. So don't overthink things because a lot of times you're like all worried that it doesn't look perfect. And it, it really doesn't need to be perfect because nothing in nature is perfect, really. It's just beautiful is what it is. So anyway, I'm gonna take a little bit of the limeade and I'm gonna make a background of green leaves. I'm just putting a drop down, wiping out my brush. So this is a little more advanced, but not really. It's just another layer. Don't be afraid. And I'm just adding little dots of alcohol and that will turn into leaves. If you've seen my other videos, you know that I do a lot of smashing around and that's where the leaves, they do their own deal. They actually will appear and you don't do anything. Ooh, that was brown. Well, I guess that wasn't a good one. So what do I do? Do I panic? No, I can make another flower out of it, but I'm just gonna wipe it out. Not a problem. The magic of alcohol. Some more limeade. I love that color. It's really great. It's a real green green. Anyway, just adding little dots going in and out of that scribble area we did before. A little darker on the edges. Don't worry if it goes over that line, it doesn't matter. Because we're gonna 
use some of this background behind the um, frame that we're gonna use. So I just wanna darken in here a little bit, darken in around the corners or the edges. Not so much a corner, I'm just tap in between. If I want it open, you can have them overlap. Like this one has a little bit in between. You don't have to, you can have them overlap. And now I'm just gonna darken it a little bit with that drier amount of ink. Just let it dry out. It only takes a few seconds, your ink will dry out and you can get a thicker, more dark ink. Look how beautiful that is. And I just wanna scribble in here a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna wipe out my brush and I'm gonna get some more of that yellow, sunshine yellow. And again, I'm, this time I want it to dry out a little bit. Put it on my craft sheet and then just scribble in between the two lines. Scribble, scribble, don't worry about it. Scribble, scribble. Just use that tip of that brush. And then again on here, just scribble in that edge. You're just softening the edge. You don't wanna be going in the middle and all of that. This isn't, it's just a little sweetness. We're not overthinking it. Just tap, 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 tap around the edge. And now you get a nice value change. Wipe out your brush and again, tap in between the two lines and just scribble it. But they all come out of the center. And if you do that, it looks like petals and you don't have to overthink it. It's, uh, it's impressionist painting. Okay, so now you're all an impressionist. So now what I wanna do is take the, the little frame we made and I wanna put a little teak wood on it. And I'm just gonna go into this mix of teak wood and green, I don't care. And I'm gonna start at the bottom and walk my way up. And again, it's on top of the green that we put down of the glitter from the stickles. And that makes that nice slick surface so I can get value changes and I can lift off if I wish. And uh, I might add more glitter. That looks really pretty, okay. And I want to add a little more glitter. Okay. Put that on its side so I can use it when I want. It doesn't roll around. And now I'm going to add a thicker layer. Not too thick. I'd like but just a little bit on top. Or some more glitter. Because this is going to be a sparkling frame. And you want it, I want the picture not to have any glitter so that the frame is really ornate. And the picture is a beautiful, sunshiny, happy day, sunflower picture. All right, that looks really good and I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, quickly, so I don't bore you. But I, you wanna keep a little bit around the edge. And if you want, I, I'll show you this. You can put this down so you can see how much space you're allowed. And you're allowed about, you know, you need to have at least uh, an eighth of an inch around it. Okay, so then I'm gonna cut it out. Then I might just leave it an eighth of an inch around. If you have to, you can always retrim, but I'm just keeping an eighth of an inch around. And I, I like the translucent. Um, Yupo paper for this because it's softer looking. So the colors aren't as vibrant, they're more soft. And actually the color is pretty vibrant, it's just soft. It's not as uh, hash and I kind of like that look because the glitter paper is, is a little bit more hash in comparison. And uh, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna put a frame on it. Now that it's dry and we're gonna glue that all down. So we'll get the glue. And then we're gonna put some flowers on it. So I'm gonna just take the glue and get the painting down first. How I want it. And I know I want it kind of, maybe off center might be good. I don't know. We might put a sentiment. You might wanna put a sentiment. We'll put it up higher. And we'll just put this on just to see how it's sitting. And that looks pretty nice to me. So I'm just gonna put this on with a little glue. And 
just line that up with your line and it won't show. There you go. And like I said, any of the glue that's there will dry clear. Now I want to put another flower and I want it on top. So I'm going to put a little gob of glue. And I already glued a little flower on top of that one with my element stash. And look how pretty that looks already. And then I want to get a couple more flowers. I like that one there. And, oops, and that one there. That looks really pretty. Actually, I might want to let's see what else I got in my little stashy area here. Oh, this one's pretty nice too. Let's get this one over here because it kind of like graduates in size. So I'm going to put that one down. Another one. So it's like a teardrop in a way. It's a hot teardrop shape. So always think of shapes and um, keeping things overlapping or underlapping or spaced out the way you like. You can see how pretty that is. And then you put a sentiment over there or underneath. It's a beautiful card. So you could add more, but sometimes more is too much more. But you could. Look at that. That looks pretty nice. I kind of like it. But I'm alternating. Do you see that? And that really looks pretty nice. So do what you want to do. I'm going to show you a few more things uh, that I did to give you more ideas. Let's put this aside and let that dry. Okay. Here's that one we did. Looks really cute, doesn't it? Okay, so I have a couple more I want to show you. Here's another one I did of Wendy's... Um, beautiful frames and I did another painting and I just colored the background in blue and I used little stickles, dots all the way around. I thought that was really nice and I put it in the center. Very beautiful. Now this one here is more of a painting. So a lot of people love the abstracts, I do. And what I did was I used um, Ranger's mixed media um, texture paste and I went on top of the glitter paper so that the glitter will kind of pop through here and there. Then I used Wendy's little elements, but I painted them with the texture paste and with some of the wax that Tim Holtz came out with, the new wax. So you see this beautiful thing and I used black, only black alcohol ink with it. Then I took it and I put a frame on it and look how beautiful that is. That's stunning. I mean, that is just beautiful. And it's just that it's got a center of interest and it brings you up and around. You see that? It's all got a reason for it, what it's doing. And that's what will make your art stand out. But look how beautiful that is with Wendy's little elements. So you can use them in other ways. They're not just made for cards and um, that. You've got to think about mixed media. And that's pretty hot now. You could even change it up and use brighter things. You know what I mean? And just did a little... So it's just a matter of what you're thinking you like. I mean, I get crazy and I start thinking, oh, maybe I would like, just to give you ideas, maybe a little a little texture underneath and put a, the uh, wreath on there and then have it come down and use a different color maybe. Little flower, layer. So I hope this gives you some great ideas on, on how to use the... Um, Wendy's elements because they are just great. Her chippies are, they're just so uh, adorable. And she, uh, and you can use them in so many ways. So I hope this gives you some great ideas. And if you need any help, you know, you can always reach out here to Ranger. You just leave a text message. And I'd love to see your artwork if you ever want to post. Let us know. Tag us and we'd love to see it. So till next time, everybody. Happy painting. Bye.